Coach D.D. Bro gets a key to the city, and the LSU Tigers score a 196-875 to swamp the Florida Gators. All the action coming up next. Who are we, ladies? We are the Tigers. When your feet hit the ground, you should be running. You're in the hunt for your next great championship. Who are we? We are Tigers! Who are we? We are Tigers! Inside LSU Gymnastics with Coach Didi Bro, brought to you by New Orleans Roast Coffee. Welcome to the premiere edition of Inside LSU Gymnastics with Coach D.D. Bro. Along with Coach Bro, I'm Mike Smith, and it's my pleasure to be here in the courtside club of the Maravich Assembly Center after Coach a big win tonight against the Florida Gators. And what a great way not only to start our Inside LSU Gymnastics show, but what a great second meet of the season. What a great team. What a great effort. And it was exciting. I think it was exciting for the fans. It was exciting for, I, I know the staff was, was, was just throughout the entire competition. It was a great sporting event. It started in great fashion. The Tigers start with a 49-3 on vault this, uh, this evening. And really, Didi, from the first performer on, it was consistent, consistent, consistent. You know, I, Bob is, is masterful at getting the kids ready. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to, as the season progresses, he's got a, a few other vaulters, a few other kids that he'd like to get in the lineup. But the, the six that he chose tonight were definitely the right six kids. You know, you start off with Kaylee Dixon with a 9-7-7-5. And then Lomencia Hall steps up and goes 9-8. And then from there, you felt like that the girls really saw that sticking landings was going to be the key to getting close to 9-9, and you had a pair of those tonight. Well, you know, that's, a, that's going to be a critical part of the, the puzzles. We have to be able to plug that in, and, you know, we talked tonight about it being darts. They've, mm -hmm. they've got to be able to do that. Um, and we've got kids that are certainly strong enough and capable. Malia Mathis, you know, we middle of the lineup. She's beautiful in the air, and then she lands and takes that little step, but, and she's getting that big score. She's got a 9.85 tonight, mm -hmm. and that's with that little bit of footfall. So, you know, we, the pressure's on us now. We've got to get better from here. So, Sari Morrison and Reagan Corville in the vault lineup tonight with a pair of 9.9s. As I said, 49.3. You know, for the second week of the season, that is a very respectable score. I, you know, I'm going to throw it to Bob again. He's done a, a tremendous job preparing the kids. He's very methodical about his process and what he wants done and how he wants to do it. And um, I'm looking forward to this week and, and, and the kind of training that we're going to have to get us ready. But, um, boy, they, they really blasted it out tonight. So, Didi, a 49-3 on the vault tonight, and it really propelled your team to a 196-875 score, the highest score for the Tigers since 2010. And that was just a fantastic way to get this meet going tonight. So let's take a look at another fantastic part of LSU, this beautiful campus here in Baton Rouge.
Jay, as, uh, as associate head coach, you've two primary, uh, I guess, areas of focus, one being recruiting and then another on the uneven bars. And tonight against the Florida Gators in the Maravich Center, the bars did not disappoint. Well, we had a, we had a better night for sure. You know, coming out of the first meet where we had the, the, the mistakes in the first two mm -hmm. up, we felt like we needed to kind of stick with those kids because uh, we want them to gain their confidence and force them to kind of get through that knot hole if we can early in the season. And I felt like we did that. Mm -hmm. It was great to see uh, Jesse Jordan bounce back and get us off to a really good start good solid routine right there at the beginning. Mm -hmm. We're still a little bit short on our handstands and not executing as well as we'd like. Uh, but but the main thing at this point in the season, as we as we found out tonight, is that you gotta be able to put five out of six on every event and then and use that as sort of your baseline and go from there. So she got us off to a great start and then Mac or Mackenzie Fox as we call her Mac, um, really just felt like she needed to get her confidence going. Mm -hmm. She does a she's done a great job in the in the gym and really uh, outside of one or two other people, it's probably been the most consistent performer that we've had in training uh, all fall long on that event. So, um, you know, it was good to see her get out there, get her feet under a little bit, and get a little better, uh, little better result from the work that she's put in all fall because she's done an amazing job and, and is a great kid. Lomencia Hall was third in the lineup tonight, and it's really sort of the middle part of these lineups in, in, in on vault, bars, beam, and floor that really seemed to be producing for the Tigers in the first two weeks of this season. Well, Lamencia has to really work at bars, number one. I mean, it's not her natural event. She's a powerful athlete, and so uh, getting her to understand that she doesn't have to swing with a death grip on the bars is, is, is something that we've really worked hard at, and she's getting better and better in that, at, that week to week. And the thing that she does well uh, most times is land well, and she did that again tonight, and I think that really sort of set the tone uh, for the rest of the bar lineup. And I think in general we landed well tonight. Mm -hmm. I think Jesse Jordan stuck and Lamencia stuck, and then we ended up uh, with two other sticks even uh, later in the lineup. So just a, a solid night and Lamencia really is, has been a stalwart all fall in that in that spot. Lamencia Hall tonight finishes second in the all around partly because of a really solid bar score but towards the end of the bars lineup Jay Reagan Corville and Sari Morrison really have become two great anchors toward the end of that lineup. They are and really as our as they go our bar lineup will go. They're, they're, they're superstars on that event. They, they really make it look effortless and the, uh, they do a great job. We've got some other kids that are trying to challenge and break into that lineup and that's healthy. That's going to help us continue to build on our consistency and our execution in the gym because anytime you can create that competition, uh, it really it really makes for a, a much better situation. 49-175 was the Tigers bar score tonight and it was key because it held the meet close at the halfway point of tonight's meet. Support the LSU Tigers and grab the hottest officially licensed gear from lsushop.net. Gear up from head to toe with authentic Tigers apparel by Nike. Look like a true fan by heading to lsushop.net for thousands of Tigers items. Get the best customer service, 365 day hassle free returns and flat rate shipping on any size order. All at the official online store of the LSU Tigers, lsushop.net. Taste that brew, billowing out the pie. Walk on in, see a few friends, where you at, what now? DJ! Hey. DJ! Yeah. Got to get up DJ. early in the morning, man. DJ. You know, I got to have my coffee. PJ. So I'm going to run on down to PJ. PJ. You got to have it. PJ. Early in the morning. When I hear the crowd and stuff like that, that just makes things so much better because they know how hard this Tigers team works each and every day. So just to have it and to be that last person to kind of solidify, we are Tigers, and that's what it's all about. We're back on Inside LSU Gymnastics with head coach Dee Dee Bro. So we're at the halfway point of tonight's meet. It's a two-tenth meet against the Florida Gators, the 11th largest crowd in the history of the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. About 4,100 raucous fans in the Maravich Center tonight, Dee Dee. And I'll tell you, when we went into the balance beam, it seemed like we had momentum coming off of bars, but beam is one of those tricky events that you can't really have too much, I guess, enthusiasm on the event because the margin for error is so slim. Well, and you know, beam, beam is that event, it's the foul shot mm -hmm. event, you know, it's, uh, it's the field goal kicker event, and every single person in the lineup is critical, and, and we practice with a lot of pressure on the kids, we try to do numbers, we, we set a number early in the week, what we want to get done by our competition, and the kids 
have an established pattern mm -hmm. and um, they stayed in their pattern they you know we talk about work in the process when Erica Garcia goes up on beam and she gives you that sense of confidence that it's okay I'm up now I'll start us off she did a great job she did a did a super job and you know there we're, we're easy dismount but she's loaded with difficulty throughout the routine and she's beautiful on the beam and Erica with a 9-8 score tonight as a leadoff performer and as you say has become a rock in that uh, uh, in in that spot in the lineup, but then you go to some 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 experience with some sprinkled in uh, some inexperience, and really, uh, if you look at the heart of your lineup with Kaylee Dixon and and Jessica Savona, and then Mincy Hall, sort of two, three, and four in the lineup, it gave you an opportunity to really set the table for the final performers. Well, you know, Mike, I really believe that, you know the, the first person is important, but that second person mm -hmm. is your second first person. And uh, Kaylee Dixon was, I thought she was a little nervous tonight. When I went over and talked to her and, and looked at her eyes, I like to see the eye of the tiger, and I saw a little bit of short breathing and a little bit of apprehension. And so, you know, I went over to the end of the beam and watched her beam routine from the end and, sure. and kind of got her settled down. But um, she has done a beautiful job for us two weeks in a row. And, you know, here's, here's a, a young lady that was sick in the middle of the week and really came back and said, no, this is my spot in the lineup. And, and she meant it. And then Jessica Savona, you know, freshman, and we're trying not to put a lot on our freshman, and she goes in on beam, and she's not a great practicer. So we really don't know a lot of times during, during the week if we're gonna get the product that, that we're expecting. And that's just what she's used to doing. And we've got to kind of mold her and change her a little bit but she's becoming more coachable, more pliable, and I think you saw that tonight. Well, we did, and then of course you round out the uh, the beam lineup uh, tonight with Lamencia Hall and Reagan Corville and Jesse Jordan. Lamencia, of course, here's another one, hadn't been in the gym this week, had a, had a funeral in the family, got back late last night from Chicago. Um, she got up there and just relaxed and kind of told everybody in the lineup, it's okay, if it is to be, depend on me. And um, it was great, and, and then stuck the dismount, and we put a lot of effort into training her to relax and stick that dismount. But then to set up the end of the lineup, and she hits, and then you got Reagan, and Reagan goes, and it's just loaded with difficulty. Her, she opens with an Arabian. Her, her back layout is absolutely soft on the beam, and mm -hmm. then she does a front aerial that's just, it's got so much air under it. Um, her, her dance, her choreography is beautiful. I felt like her, her um, rhythm was a little bit tight tonight. I felt like her, her overall mm -hmm. rhythm and her approach to her dismount is still not as aggressive as it was last year, and that's gonna come. Which the meet is practically on the line at this point because after three events, it's about a two and a half tenth meet, and uh, with the Gators being slightly ahead, what do you say to the, to the girls as you're moving from, from the third to the fourth rotation to finish on floor? I wanted our kids to go out there and, you know, as Bob says, put the sword in them and pull it out and wipe it off. <laughs> and that's what they did. And you started in fine fashion with a 9825 from Kaylee Dixon, a 98 from Jesse Jordan, and then, Dee Dee, it comes to showtime in the PMAC. The third person up, Malia Mathis. Right goes Number and four. probably does the best routine she's ever done. Mm -hmm. She leaves the floor in that double layout and she knows exactly where she's gonna land. And we've having a little trouble with her middle pass in practice and she executes it exactly, does exactly what Bob's been telling her to do. So it, it, was, it was a fabulous performance and then just to dart her double pike in her last time one pass and to perform like she did was really gratifying for her. And the large crowd inside the Merivick Center really began to sense that something special could be happening as you go into the fifth performer at, with Reagan right, Corbett. Right, right. Well, you see, Florida had already had a fall. Right. So we know now that the, the pressure's on them because we've had a fall on floor, they've had a fall on beam. Now it's a level playing field because we've got our best two floor routines fixing to come. And boy, were they great tonight. Reagan Corville with a 9-9, and then Lomencia Hall finishes it with a 9-9-5. And you know, Didi, it, it was absolutely raucous inside the Maribich Center tonight, and it's a night that uh, we won't soon forget. Well, you know, when, when the team is, is on the bench, and they're standing up, and they're getting the crowd to stand up, and the crowd is as, is as into it as they were, it is a driving force, it is an energy source and um, they, they fed on it, the team fed on it. You know, I, I, I went down the line and told the kids before Mincy went up, I said, you know, this is about y'all. 
get with her. And I saw Jay before Floor even started. You're in every performance. You're you're in every routine. And the energy and the the positive atmosphere that was in the PMAC, it was a death dome. It really was. And Lamencia Hall finishing with a 995. And let me just pause right there, Dee Dee, because. She's had a very tumultuous week, uh, you know, personally with the passing of her grandfather and the travel that was required right. and all of the things that went into that. The fact that she gets into Baton Rouge at 3 a.m. the morning of the meet and then is able to finish a two-hour meet with a 995 with the meet on the line against an SEC power like Florida, it was special. You know, and she deserved her victory dance. You know, she goes out on the floor and, and she looked like Muhammad Ali, you know, fly <laughs> like a butterfly, sting like a bee. She was bouncing around on the floor. I mean, she, she deserved every moment of celebration, and, and the team was, it was such an intrinsic experience for everyone. The crowd could sense it, and the only thing left to do after the 995 was just tally the math, do the math. And when it was all said and done, the Tigers with a 196 875 tonight in Maravich Center, the highest score for LSU since 2010, and that was the last time the Tigers hit a 197. After this timeout, we'll come back to Inside LSU Gymnastics with head coach Dee Dee Bro to wrap things up from the Courtside Club in the Maravich Assembly Center in Baton Rouge. Students everywhere agree LSU is a phenomenal choice. Experience the campus where passion becomes genius. Now, only at LSU. This week's wild performance of the week had to be Lamencia Hall. She was absolutely splendid, and you look at what she went through this week, and um, it's wow. Let's take a look at a fantastic piece that the LSU Athletic Department has put together, highlighting LSU head coach Dee Dee Bro's 600th win. With a season opening win against top 25 NC State, LSU's Dee Dee Bro claimed her 600th victory, all with the Tigers. In the history of collegiate gymnastics, only three coaches claim more victories than Bro, and few can match her determination. Over the last decade, four different gymnasts have won individual national championships as the Tigers made back-to-back -back appearances at the Super 6 in 2008 and 2009. Bro has also joined some elite company in the school record books, joining Hall of Famer Skip Bertman as the only coaches with more than 600 victories at LSU. Dale Brown won 448 games while pushing his Tigers to five SEC titles and two appearances at the Final Four. Sue Gunter won 442 games at LSU and 708 overall, elevating the women's program to seven Sweet 16s and the school's first Final Four. Bro worked alongside all three Tiger icons and took time to reminisce about her coaching contemporaries. I have the, the utmost respect for Dale, and they play so many games in basketball, and his tenure, he was here when I got here, and um, he was a great supporter, and, and then I, I remember Sue Gunner, when, when Sue Gunner arrived, and women's basketball was here before, I, before we started gymnastics, and to, to watch all the changing of the guards that, that they have had, and I have been here to, to see people come and see people go, and, and to realize that we really are making a difference and we really are impacting young people's lives and they're what they are because of the difference that, that the people at LSU, the academic people and the professors and everybody get in their lives. Like Sue Gunter, Bro was inducted into the Hall of Fame while still an active coach. In 2009, Dee Dee was welcomed into the USA Gymnastics Hall of Fame. Bro still vividly remembers how it all started more than 35 years ago. I got here and, and Title IX was, was just a thought process and then to watch it be ushered in and to watch everything evolve and we started with a corner in the field house. We started with our competitions in the field house with, with family and friends and you know nothing more than just a will for the team to survive. We had tremendous supporters, people like Ernie and Kathy Hill, uh, Pat Newman, Bill Bankhead. 
Malcolm Ward, who's our tabulator tonight, has been with us every step of the way. And, and I mean, it has come from baby steps to, to giant steps. Bro has coached five different gymnasts to a total of eight individual national championships, starting in 1977 with Jeannie Beadle. Beadle became the first female All-American and national title holder at LSU. Jeannie Beadle, she was a, a Baton Rouge icon. She was a, a gymnast in Baton Rouge before kids did gymnastics. And she came to LSU, she was a cheerleader and a gymnast, won a national title. What an incredible balance beam worker. Nikki Arnstad was LSU's next champion, winning the 2002 floor title with a 9950. Nikki waited to her last performance her senior year, uh, the national championships at the University of Georgia. She Her first tumbling pass was a triple full, and nobody did triples like she did. And when she nailed that, we knew that the, the national title was in her grasp. Bro caught lightning in a bottle again with another beam title in 2006. April Burkholder capped off an All-American career with her sport's highest honor. She made finals her senior year every event and um, did not, did not ever, ever give us less than 100% in her performances. Susan Jackson became LSU's first underclassman to win a national championship, earning the vault title in 2008 as a true sophomore. Her teammate, Ashley Claire Kearney, took home two national titles in 2009, racing past the competition on vault, and floor. Jackson would match ACK with two more titles during her senior season, winning the beam and all-around championships in 2010. Ashley and, and, and Susan, I think, pushed each other and they made each other better. Susan vaulted first and then she walked down the, the runway and she looked at Ashley Claire Kearney and she said, now I've showed you what you have to do. Beat me and this is your title. And I don't think I'll ever forget that conversation between those two incredible competitive athletes. With a talented roster and four returning All-Americans, it looks to be another banner year in Baton Rouge. Reporting for Inside LSU Gymnastics, I'm Garrett Wolverton. Students everywhere agree LSU is a phenomenal choice. Experience the campus where passion becomes genius. Now, only at LSU. Taste that brew, pillow and apple pie. Walk on in, see if you friends, where you at, what now? DJ! DJ! Yeah. Got to get up DJ. early in the morning, man. You know, I got to have my coffee. PJ. So I'm going to run on down to PJ. You got to have it. PJ. It's early in the morning. So we had a great night of LSU gymnastics inside the Maribich Center tonight. The Fighting Tigers of LSU with one of the highest scores in recent years, a 196-875 against the Florida Gators in front of a terrific crowd of over 4,000 fans. And, Dee, Dee it was a memorable night. It was a great night, Mike, and we're looking forward to Alabama. And that'll happen this coming Friday night at the Capstone inside Pullman Coliseum on the campus of the University of Alabama. It's a 7.30 meet, and you can catch all of the action in the Go Zone on LSUsports.net, free of charge. Listen in, and you can hear all the action, Didi, and we'll be right there to carry it for you live. So for head coach Didi Bro, I'm Mike Smith saying thanks for watching Inside LSU Gymnastics with head coach Didi Bro. Until next week, Go Tigers! Inside LSU Gymnastics with Didi Bro has been brought to you by New Orleans Roast Coffee, the LSU Tiger Spotters, Wow Cafe American Grill and Wingery, Flying Tigers Gymnastics Camp, PJ's Coffee, and Glenn Armenter Pay It Forward Scholarship Program of Excellence.